we talked about how there's producers like plants that make their own food. And we talked about how there's consumers like us that have to eat other plants and animals to survive. But did you know there's different kinds of consumers? Well, I mean, there are some animals out there that only eat plants. And there's some animals that only eat meat. And we eat both of those things. Yeah, exactly. And there's actually really cool scientific words for all those different kinds of consumers. What do we call a predator that eats only other animals? Oh, I know that one. That one's a carnivore. That one is a carnivore. So an example of a carnivore around here could be a mountain lion. A mountain lion only eats other animals for all of its energy needs. So Ashley, what are we called? Well, Rebecca, we eat plants and animals, and we actually need both plants and animals, or protein and nutrients, to survive. So we're called an omnivore. Omnivore. Yeah. Okay. An omnivore. Can you think of any other animals in Colorado, in our own backyard here, that are also omnivores? What about a bear? Bears. Very good. And what do you call something that only eats plants? Oh, well, that's actually called an herbivore. So. Rebecca, now that we know we have producers, herbivores that eat plants, we have omnivores that eat plants and animals, and that we have carnivores that eat only other animals, do you want to do a challenge with me? Yeah, what is it? All right, we are going to go exploring in this whole area here, this sagebrush ecosystem, and we're going to be looking for and telling evidence of these different kinds of producers and consumers. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. Great. So how about you tally our producers, or okay. every plant that you see, every Whoa. individual plant. And how about you also tally our herbivores? I will work on tallying up our omnivores, or evidence of omnivores, and evidence of carnivore. So let's split up and cover this whole same area and meet back here when you're all ready. How much time do we have? Let's just do five minutes. As okay. much as you can count in five minutes. Okay. Ready? Put five minutes on the clock. Set. Go! Look at all the snail shells around here. The snails are herbivores, so I can tally all of those in the herbivore column. Let's count them. Wow, check this out. It looks like there's a lot of fur here. It might be from an animal like a deer. There's a couple of different colors, this darker brown, lighter. This is definitely what I would call uh, evidence of a carnivore. Maybe it was a mountain lion kill. There doesn't seem to be any bones left or any part of the animal, so maybe it's an older kill that was here before the winter. Good find. Check out this print I just found, this track in the mud. It's really well preserved here. It looks to me like a hoof. And I'm guessing maybe it is a deer, which is one of our herbivores around here. I'll definitely remind Rebecca to add this one to her list. You can see this track. Wow. Here we have some, we found some scat. And this is the shape of what herbivore scat usually looks like. You can see they're kind of small ovals. And depending on what animal, what herbivore it was, um, it will vary in size. So a larger animal might have larger scat than a smaller animal. Wow, Rebecca, can you believe it's been five minutes already? I found so much stuff. Wow, you really found a lot more than I did. Should we <sighs> add them all up and yeah, see our let's totals? Do it. So I had four omnivores. Most of those were actually crows that I saw and heard flying over. Crows actually eat plants and other animals. And I found one sign of a carnivore. You remember all that fur on the ground that was probably because of a mountain lion? Rebecca, what did you find? I found 82 producers. Wow. And there's so many more than that out here. That was just what I could count. 
And for herbivores, I found 21, and those were mostly little snail shells. Wow, okay, well, I'm gonna take our information here. We have 82 producers, 21 herbivores, four omnivores, and one carnivore. And I'm gonna build it into the shape of a pyramid. Cool. All right, let's give it a try. So our producers, it looks like, from our pyramid, are kind of the base of our food chain. And this pyramid we built is actually called a trophic pyramid and helps to show how much energy there is available at every level of the food chain, from the producers all the way up to the top predator. Do you think, Rebecca, the pyramid actually gets smaller as you move from producers to herbivores to omnivores and finally to carnivores? Well, each of those things eats what's below it, right? Yeah. So it gets smaller because it seems like the herbivores and the omnivores would need to eat a lot of plants to get energy. Exactly. And actually, as you move through the different chains, energy is lost in just the processes of living. What would happen if the carnivores went away? If we took out the carnivores from our pyramid, what would happen to omnivores and maybe some herbivores below? Well, the carnivores eat the herbivores and the omnivores, so they wouldn't have anything to keep their numbers in check, and they would need more plants to survive. So once they ate all the plants and they were gone, there wouldn't be any food left for anyone. Exactly, wow, that's amazing. Why. What we can find and what we can learn when we take a few minutes to just really look closely at what's around us. Yeah, thanks for joining me today. I've learned so much, Rebecca. Me too. Thanks guys.